do do short theme song intro. Hello, welcome to Left to the Box News Bites. Yep, I'm giving you another News Bites. This is like two in a row. Most people in Ontario have heard about the green belt, but how many people actually know what it is? Before I answer that, please be sure to make a sacrifice to the algorithm god and click over the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's super important you do this to help get my channel up and going. And as you might be able to tell with a lot of my videos, I'm kind of looking off to the side. That's because I don't have a teleprompter. That's because I don't have money. So to help me get a teleprompter and be able to look directly in the camera when I'm speaking, you can become a Patreon. And that way I can upgrade my equipment and provide better videos for your viewing enjoyment. Link in the description box below. A green belt is a chunk of mainly undeveloped or agricultural land that is zoned to prevent development of the area and they surround or neighbor urban centers. The benefits to having green belts are immense, including keeping drinking water clean, allowing wildlife to thrive, tourism, and creating a healthier environment. There are many green belts around the world. A few notable examples are in Australia, Iran, Thailand, and Brazil. On February 28, 2005, Ontario established the world's largest green belt. At over 2 million acres in size, it protects our farmland, forests, wetlands, rivers, and lakes. It encompasses the Niagara Escarpment, the Oak Ridges Moraine, and is the heart of the Greater Golden Horseshoe. The quality of drinking water for more than 7 million Canadians is dependent on the health of our Greenbelt, and considering the population of Canada is 38 million people, that is like a percentage. I don't math. Also, the Green Belt offsets 71 million tons of carbon each year. Many of the land features in the Green Belt, such as the Niagara Escarpment and countless teardrop-shaped hills called drumlins, were created when glaciers crawled over the area. Runoff from the melting glaciers deposited minerals, nutrients into the ground, producing the highest quality of soil for farmland. As someone living next to Ontario's Green Belt, I can say it gives me a sense of pride. I support local farmers as much as I can, and many of the farms are located in the green belt. There is a noticeable difference in the quality of food from local farms than you find from the imports coming in. I've also gone hiking on the Niagara Escarpment at a place called Rattlesnake Point, and it is stunning. The Escarpment is definitely an underrated tourist attraction in Ontario, and I recommend everyone go visit it at some point. Our green belt is a treasure that should be shared with generations to come. And for people who are serious about stopping climate change, we cannot afford to lose such a vital area of land to developments. Enter Doug Ford. Back during his campaign to become leader of the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario, this video was leaked to the media. We will open up the green belt, not, not all of it. We're gonna open a big chunk of it up and we're going to start building and making it more affordable and putting more houses out there. It, the, 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 the demand for single dwelling homes is huge, but no one can afford them. What you just saw there was video of Ontario PC leader Doug Ford speaking to developers back in February, promising them that if elected as Premier of Ontario, he would essentially develop a big chunk of the green belt. Now that video was leaked by the Liberals in the ramp up to the June election. I'm Natish Bisono, and behind me is part of the space Mr. Ford is talking about. Now his idea is to develop a chunk of the green belt as a way of decreasing housing prices. In fact, he thinks that that's the solution to the housing crisis in Toronto and the GTA. But according to some experts, the solution to that problem is not as easy as building along the belt. This is something called the Oak Ridges Moraine. And that's where all the water that falls recharges our rivers. So if you think the Humber River, the Credit River, the Don River, all those rivers flowing south into the lake, that's why we protected those areas and wanted to keep subdivisions off them and so that water quality would be kept high. In addition, if you want to go to a farmer's market, you want local food, and you don't want all your food to be trucked in from California, well, you got to grow it somewhere. And up there in the Greenbelt is where it's growing now. 
Now, Tim Gray also adds that opening up the lands won't necessarily make housing more affordable. Instead, it might actually let speculators loose and drive up farm prices. And This video had to be leaked because Ford knew if the public knew what he was planning, there would be pushback. And when people found out, there was pushback. Unfortunately, like many political issues, people forgot about it, and now Ford, much like what he did for Charles McFetty, is fulfilling his promises to the wealthy and corporations that helped him win. The rest of the population of Ontario be damned. Bill 229 received royal assent on December 8th. By passing this bill, conservation authorities can be forced to approve developments, even if the agency has concerns about the risk of flooding and force them to make arrangements with developers that would allow them to pay a fee to destroy habitat for endangered species. What good is a new house if it will be flooded out and it will lead to the extinction of an endangered species? It is extremely important that conservation authorities have power in planning. They were put in charge of flood forecasting and making sure developments near waterways was done safely after Hurricane Hazel struck in 1954, killing 81 people because houses had been built on floodplains. The changes in Bill 229 will put the interests of developers ahead of science-based decision-making. The province will be allowed to overrule concerns of scientists, and if we're being real, this government will always put the wants of corporations over the needs of the people, even if our drinking water and the lives of the people living on these floodplains are put at risk. Seven members of Ford's Greenbelt Council resigned over the changes, including the chair, David Crombie, a former progressive conservative MP and Toronto Mayor. What Ford has done upsets people across the political spectrum. When issues are broken down and politics are left out, most people find common ground and we realize we generally want the same things. I know it feels like little can be done when they have the majority in Queen's Park, but we must remember we can make a difference. The Conservatives don't speak for all Ontarians. They only won 40% of the popular vote in the 2018 provincial election. The other 60% is split between the NDP, Liberals and Greens, all left-leaning parties. But because the PCs won 76 of the 124 seats, they can push through anything corporations and the wealthy want. But if enough people contact Doug Ford and their Conservative MPPs and let them know their jobs are on the line if they don't start doing what is in the best interests of the people, there will be enough pressure to prevent further destruction. To find out who your MPP is, click in the link in the description box below that I provided for you. We must stay plugged into what is happening before the damage is irreversible. Get informed, get involved. I hope you found this video interesting and that the next time you vote, you feel you have a better understanding of what's on the line. Links about Ontario's Green Belt in Bill 229 can be found in the description box where you will also find a link to my Patreon page. You can help out financially for as little, again, as $3 a month or as much as $25 a month if you have it. I would greatly appreciate it, but I do understand times are tough. So at the cost of nothing, if you could like, subscribe, share this video and follow me on Twitter, it will help get attention to this channel. And in the comments section below, let me know what your favorite part of the green belt is. For me, it's all of it. Yep, pretty much everything about it rocks. Even the rocks. <laughs> Thank you for watching and stay tuned. I'm Sandy, wishing your tomorrow is better than your today.